Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new, welcome on in. Today's video is a little different. Uh, instead of the typical nature studio vlog that I usually do, I wanted to share the process of how I cut and hang, dry and crush my own herbs. I have a pretty small herb garden so far. I'm expanding every year. I grow a really big veggie garden every year and having my own herb garden is something I've really been loving. And I wanted to share the process of that uh, with all of you. It's getting into winter here now. So all the herbs I've had hanging since the end of the summer fall season are all dried and ready to go. So I thought I'd share that with you. Also, stay tuned all the way to the end of this video for the spice shelf reveal. <laughs> I've been working on spice illustrations that y'all have seen in my last few studio vlogs with the intent of redoing my spice rack and they are now finished. The shelf is beautiful and I can't wait to share that with you. <laughs> Thanks for watching, enjoy. To start, you'll need fresh herbs, of course. I went out to one of my planters and clipped some thyme that was ready. Also, a quick note about what I hang these on because I didn't really give a specific overview. You can hang herbs on pretty much anything. I took some sticks and put together a star shape hanger, which you'll see later when we get to that part. But really, you know, sticks, twine, hooks, anything you have, it doesn't need to be fancy, just something where they can hang to dry. Anywho, so clipped some thyme and we head in to get it wrapped. You need very few supplies for hanging herbs, uh, obviously the fresh herbs themselves, then some twine, string, thread, really anything you can wrap towards the top and hang them by, and a pair of scissors. Start by cutting yourself off a length of whatever you're tying with, um, and I always go larger versus smaller, so usually roughly six to eight inches, which is way more than needed, but it is so much easier to tie a tiny little knot with extra string than with not enough. Plus, you will need some extra string for actually tying it up to your hanger once finished. The next step is to start separating out sprigs of each herb. It's important when herbs are hanging to dry that they're not too tightly packed so they can dry really evenly and thoroughly. So I usually keep it about, I would say, four to six sprigs per bundle. It really depends on the herb. Some are more dense and tightly packed than others, but you just want to make sure everything has enough space to dry out. Once you have a bundle gathered, bunch it up at the top, grab your string, and I just tie a double granny knot around the middle. I try and leave a lot of extra string hanging off the end so I can tie it up to the hanger when I am done. And that's really it. Repeat for the rest of your bundles, you know, separating out sprigs, tying each one off until all your herbs are gathered and ready to hang. then it's time to tie them on the hanger. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, your hangers do not need to be fancy. I literally took some sticks, hot glued them into a star shape, tied some yarn on them, and hung them from the ceiling. Don't feel they need to be anything fancy. Simply hang them up with space in between each one so they can dry thoroughly. And in roughly three weeks, your herbs will be dried and ready to crush. Three weeks later. So here we are, roughly three weeks to a month later, with a bunch of dry herbs all ready to be taken down, crushed, and bottled. Please note the three weeks is just an approximation. It hugely matters where you live, air temperature, humidity, all of that. So don't be discouraged if after three weeks or a month, yours do not seem dry or ready at all. Just keep them hanging. It's totally fine. They'll dry out. Now it's time to crush them, the fun part in my opinion. You'll simply need, besides your dried herbs, of course, a mortar and pestle for this. I started with some dill that I had grown in my garden and dried out. Uh, basically, as you take it off, your dill is very crumbly. You hardly need to crush this at all. Also, a note, this is a messy process. Don't worry about getting, you know, herb bits everywhere. It cleans up very easily. So with the dill, you're basically just going to break off all the side pieces and leave kind of the center stem out. I have always skipped the center stem because it's so big and doesn't really break up well. And the spindly side pieces here that have dried out are more flavorful. 
I scraped up any bits that had fallen back into the mortar. Make sure your work surface is clean because like I said, it's a messy process and you can save a lot of the bits that fall instead of wasting them as long as your work surface is clean. So I put those back in the mortar and then just crush them with the pestle. With dill specifically, you seriously hardly even need to use the pestle. It pretty much just crushes the second you <laughs> put any kind of weight on it. So I just did a few little swirls with it until it was not super fine, but a nice crushed powdery consistency and then bottled it up. Next, I moved on to crushing some thyme. This is the exact same process. You just have to be a little more careful with thyme as you pluck each leaf and put it in. Thyme has a lot of stem pieces that are not gonna break down well, so I just am a little bit more careful about pulling off the leaves as opposed to the dill, which you could kind of just, you know, crush as you're putting it in the mortar. But with thyme, a little bit more meticulous pulling of the leaves definitely makes for an easier time crushing it down. When crushing thyme, if any little stem bits have fallen in, uh, I try and pick those out ahead of time just again to ease the crushing process. And then as it crushes down, I find that there are little fibrous bits that tend to clump together. I'm sh I mean, they're not inedible at all. They're just not the best texture in my opinion when you're adding spices to something. So I usually try and pull little clumps of those out if I can, but honestly, if you don't wanna do that, it's not gonna hurt you at all. And the last herb I had saved to dry and crush is actually lavender. Now, I don't use lavender in cooking. Some people do. I don't particularly enjoy floral herbs in cooking because I feel like it always makes everything taste like soap, <laughs> especially because for me, I usually associate lavender with cleaning things like I, or the bath. Like I, it's not a flavor I enjoy to eat. It is, however, one I enjoy to smell. And that's what I do with my crushed lavender. I love having it uh, to sprinkle in the tub. It's super relaxing, even just to make little sachets with, to you know keep in drawers or things like that. It just, I love the smell of fresh lavender and it's a great addition to any herb or vegetable garden too because bees really love it. Once you've crushed all your herbs, you'll likely have a pile like this of leftover stems and things. I simply take off the twine string, whatever you're using, and then put these in compost or otherwise just toss them. And now for the new spice rack reveal. This is the before, which is fine. It's just very busy, mismatched, not aesthetically pleasing. And now the after. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed it. I was so happy with how my new spice rack has turned out. I absolutely love the bottles and the jars and the illustrations. It's just so rustic and witchy and wonderful and brightens my day every time I see it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you haven't and you like what you see here. I'm so excited to start filming wintry nature goodness for all of you. It's so beautiful here in the winter and uh, we're kind of just waiting on the snow. So. <laughs> Um, take care everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks for watching.